Hey, hey, hey. Alright guys, welcome to another episode of the Wasabi Research Club. Today we are talking about Zerolink, the Bitcoin fungibility framework. Um, the the uh, paper is available on GitHub. Uh, the link is right here. Um, and it's in on it's a work in progress. It's, it's, it's ongoing, but it uh, the the is mostly formalized in 2017, so we'll say that. And um, uh, this is what we've been doing uh, so far. So uh, if you recall the, the last few weeks, um, and uh, as always, we will decide on the next week's topic um, by the end of this uh, Wasabi Research Club meeting. And of course, you can find out everything on, a, on the uh, GitHub at the link uh, below. Um, so we'll talk about uh, fungibility and coin joints. Um, just go over the basics of the Zerolink architecture. Um, Zerolink has many parts to it. Uh, we're going to focus on how uh, the coordinator can build a uh, uh, a coin join without requiring that the users trust the coordinator. We'll talk briefly about attack vectors uh, to Zerolink mentioned in the article, and I think just one that I that I'll bring up, and then we'll just sort of open it up. And you know, we're very lucky in, in this uh, in this call that we happen to have uh, one of the authors of, uh, of the paper uh, on the call. But uh, for the life of me, I can't pronounce his name and I, I would hate to be rude. So we'll just leave that out for now and I'll uh, just move forward. Okay, so uh, we're familiar with the privacy problem with Bitcoin. Transactions are public, uh, inputs, uh, um, point to previous unspent outputs, and then there's this whole graph that's that's leaking, uh, sort of uh, what transactions are connected to other transactions. Um, we've talked about before the idea that if you have two users that are engaging in, in in transactions, they can join their transactions together. So on the left we have two transactions, on the right we have those two transactions joined together, just like this. And we've talked in the past about um, why you can't just do this in a sort of simple way because what happens is uh, you can sort of uh, uh, do the math, uh, try to uh, find the sums on the left and the sums on the right and see if you get a match. So in this case, you know, we can, we can try to figure out a match of 57 and 50 and there's no match there. And so you find another input and output until you have a perfect match and then you can quite easily um, take uh, this one transaction, break it back down into uh, its parts. So it's not very safe to just take any two transactions and combine them together. Um, we've talked about equal output coin joints. So the idea here is that you have these two individuals, they agree on some equal output. In this case, the equal output is 10. Uh, they agree that uh, they will both create one anonymous output of 10. And when you combine these two transactions together into one, well, what happens is that um, uh, even if you know the two inputs are different people and you mark them as different individuals, you can easily trace the change, but you're left with this question, what about these two outputs here? You don't know um, where uh, the outputs uh, belong to um, because they could easily uh, both belong to orange or yellow um, equally. There's no, uh, uh, there's no special hint as to whether these two outputs belong to yellow or orange. Um, so the question is, how can this be coordinated without loss of privacy? So uh, if we want to make this uh, this uh, coin join happen, we, we need it to be coordinated because clearly two individuals working in tandem, that's some that, that requires coordination. So how are we going to do this? Uh, option one is without a coordinator. We talked at length at uh, over multiple uh, meetings. We talked about cash fusion, cash shuffle, coin shuffle, coin shuffle plus plus, talking about different ways to uh, get individuals to completely, uh, um, in a decentralized way, uh, establish uh, this coordination. Um, but we, the zero link paper mentions this that this is very tedious and cumbersome and hard to improve, hard to upgrade. Um, and so uh, what would be more ideal is a coordinator that we don't trust. Obviously, option two is, you know, why don't we just use a, a coordinator that we do trust? Um, you know, for example, we could just have a, a single a central server. Uh, everyone just sends the, uh, the extended public key to that server and the server will, will do the magic. And we, we hope the server doesn't uh, reveal that uh, uh, sensitive information to, um, to any other individuals. Uh, now that obviously uh, sounds pretty stupid, so we're not going to do that. Uh, so what we're going to do is uh, talk about zero link coin joins. Um, 
or, or sometimes called Chomian blind uh, coin joins, or uh, more technically, uh, Schnorian blind coin joins, because uh, we're using Schnorr blind signatures uh, in the model. Um, so zero link coin join, uh, Chomian blind coin join, We'll take these uh, uh, three users, and uh, as it turns out, I have a better presentation um, that I did in the past, which I'm going to quickly pull up to explain this in part because it's also uh, copied from what David made. So we'll just use this. So here we go. So the um, uh, the coordinator here is interacting with uh, a zero link uh, wallet. Uh, a set of zero link wallets. And the goal is to build this final coin join transaction, right? Um, but we also want to make sure that the wallets don't reveal to the coordinator at a minimum the um, uh, the uh, output that is anonymous because otherwise it's not really anonymous. Um, so uh, this is bro uh, broken down into phases. Phase one, uh, Alice will uh, present a coin that uh, uh, meets the minimum requirement for the denomination that the coin join is, is, is doing. So Alice will present the coin. Alice will also present proof of the coin. Uh, this proof is a signature uh, with the public key of where the coin is currently stored. Alice will also present an output for the change because if we are talking about a um, equal output coin join, most almost all participants will have change and that change is linkable. So the output is unblinded and Alice will provide a blinded output for the mixed coin. This blinded output is essentially an address in a black envelope that will be given to the coordinator to sign. The coordinator will sign that black envelope and the signature from the coordinator uh, will seep through to the uh, paper inside the envelope and later Alice can uh, present it. So the, the idea here is that Alice is not giving uh, up her address. Instead, she's hiding the address and still getting a valid signature from the coordinator. Um, so, uh, so the coordinator is going to make sure that the input is in fact confirmed and unspent, that the signature is valid, that the, uh, um, that the amount is correct, and it'll, uh, the coordinator will provide a signature for the blinded output. Um, and Alice will, will store that. And that's phase one. Um, so all the participants are going to be essentially registering in this phase one. This, the phase one is the longest phase. Um, and it, it will last for up to two hours. H hypothetically, it can last as long as you want. Um, in phase two, uh, the connection of all the participants will be confirmed. Uh, anyone who is... Um, um, Unconfirmed, uh, uh, that means that the inputs have to be re-registered because otherwise uh, we don't know which unblind, oh no, excuse me, uh, whoever is uh, not confirmed, um, uh, that coin will not be, uh, will not have to wait for its signature because that user has dropped out from connectivity. Um, and then output registration. And in this, this phase, all the users are going to uh, anonymously post over Tor um, their outputs that have a valid signature but are now unblinded. And this will allow uh, the coordinator to put all the outputs of, of equal denomination on the right-hand side of the coin join transaction without knowing who it is that presented, uh, who, it, who exactly presented that output. It's important that this output registration happens roughly at the same time so that all users are sending their uh, uh, unblinded outputs over Tor at the same time so there's no timing analysis by the coordinator or by anyone else. And now that the coordinator has this uh, transaction which has all the inputs, it has all the, uh, the anonymous outputs and the change outputs, now the coordinator can present this unsigned transaction to all the participants and we re reach the final stage which, which is the signing stage. Um, of course, if we did this over the, uh, the uh, clearnet, uh, we would have an issue where uh, the coordinator would know the location, the IP address of all the individuals, or a passive bystander could, could sort of figure out who is sending um, uh, outputs based on common IP addresses. Um, and that's why everything has to be done over Tor. So all the uh, outputs, inputs, status requests, all that must be done over Tor. And it's important as well that um, uh, new Tor circuits need to be established uh, for various parts of the protocol um, so that, uh, again, uh, connecting a particular inputs to outputs can't be done. Okay. Um, so uh, when all the participants get the final coin join, they'll make sure that they are not being cheated, that they have 
uh, their uh, output and their change. Um, and then they'll present their signature and uh, give that back to the coordinator uh, for uh, collection, at which point the coordinator will be able to take uh, a fully signed transaction and broadcast to the network. All right, so that is uh, all that we need for that part, and we'll move on right back to... Okay, so um, the result is that we get this. We have our participants. They have a equal output coin join. We don't know uh, who, uh, which output belongs to whom, although the change is perfectly linked um, almost every time. In some, in some instances, the, the change isn't perfectly linked, but in almost every instance, the change is one-to-one -one perfectly linked. Um, and we describe the, the, the level of anonymity of these three outputs um, as, uh, uh, in the same way that we would describe Tor anonymity, which is to say that it's as, as anonymous as the other participants in, uh, th th that are participating in the coin join. So in this case, we would say the anonymity set is three, but that is just the theoretical upper bound for the anonymity set. It, it could be much less if, if, if someone gets compromised. Um, some immediate limitations that you should observe when we talk about zero link is that mixing and sending are separate. So uh, uh, users will have to receive coins, mix those coins, and then send those coins. And the mixing and sending are, are separated. Uh, a user may get many, many outputs depending on the amount of coins they have, um, which again is, is, is not ideal for a lot of users. If a, if a user has a very large amount of Bitcoin or a very, very small amount of Bitcoin, they might be able to. They might not be able to participate, or they'll participate and have many, many coins, which is cumbersome. Uh, nearly all users will have some unmixed change. So, if we have a fixed amount, almost everyone's going to have some change, and that change there's not anything that you can really do with that change uh, apart from you know donate it, open a lightning channel, or wait for more um, coins to come in so so that you can mix with them. And then users really depend on the frequency and behavior of other users. So if you want to mix um, very often, you hope that many people with the same denomination also want to mix very often. Um, and of course, this model may add a lot of blow to the network because we're doing a lot of transactions where we're not sending money to anyone, we're just mixing money. So we're going to briefly talk about attack vectors and then jump into questions. Um, so privacy is teamwork. Uh, what that means is that you are as protected as the number of participants that are behaving in an anonymous way uh, uh, as you are. If other participants uh, fail to act in a way that preserves their own anonymity, your anonymity is hurt uh, um, j just by the fact that they have revealed themselves. Um, this is a, a, a pretty obvious concern. So for example, if orange is revealed, now um, blue and yellow both have a reduced anonymity. And if blue is also revealed, then yellow, without even knowing it, you know, yellow could be doing everything correctly, but orange and blue failed to act in an anonymous way. They revealed their uh, their address uh, links. So now yellow is by, um, by elimination also revealed. So um, attack vectors. Uh, the first uh, attack vector described in the, in the, uh, the GitHub repo, the, the paper, is a DOS attack. Now, the, the idea of a DOS attack is to stop the coordinator from successfully uh, making uh, coin joints happen. And the way this attack would work is you have someone like Orange in this case, who is purposefully registering coins that are valid, but Orange is going to purposefully not sign transactions or um, do, do his or her best to uh, prevent the next coin joint from happening. Um, so maybe Orange will take many, many, many coins and continue to register them and then purposefully not sign them or maybe spend them before the coin join is complete. Um, a few ideas were proposed in the, in the paper. Uh, one is banning an IP address, which uh, obviously wouldn't work because we don't want to know the IP address of a lot of, of the users. So it's going to be very hard to find out where they are and we wouldn't want to use that. Um, uh, another way of dealing with this is by completing the coin join with a subset. So if 100 participants have joined and five are committing a DOS attack, simply ban them uh, and continue with the 95 remaining 
uh, participants. And if you find another three in there that, that are committing a DOS attack and purposefully not signing, uh, then you ban them and you continue to reduce the, the, the number of people until you have only the people that are uh, legitimate. Um, this is also not not ideal, but it's it's it, it, it does work at least, um, although it's not it's you know it's not perfect. Um, so there's also the idea of closed source DOS protection. So um, maybe you know you you could have everything open sourced, but the DOS protection you might have it closed source so that it's harder for an attacker to establish the the, the optimal way to attack you, and the attacker has to sort of reverse engineer um, your your prevention. Um, a, a pretty interesting idea, about, by, I believe, by Chris Belcher, is the use of fidelity bonds, essentially Bitcoin that you put in escrow um, that uh, you will lose if you fail to engage in the protocol. This is quite cumbersome. It, it, it demands that the, the, that the round take a lot longer and has been sort of opposed by, by quite a few in, individuals. And lastly, we have ban banning the registration of provided UTXOs and related UTXOs of a mal malicious Alice. Um, and this is quite simple. So if a particular coin uh, didn't uh, sign, simply ban that coin and ban its children and its parents, potentially, um, and, you know, for, let's say, an hour. And then if the attack pers persists for a while, you can ban for longer periods of time, like a day or a week. Um, obviously, the concern here is that people will uh, refuse uh, banning, uh, refuse signing by accident. If their Tor circuit breaks, if their internet connection goes down, whatever it may be, you don't want to have someone stranded with unclean coins for a week because you wrongfully assume that they're trying to commit a DOS attack. So this one uh, obviously works, but it's a bit of a, a, a double-edged sword. We have to be careful. Um, a more uh, Another attack, which is kind of interesting and in, in its, its own right, is the civil attack. Now, the civil attack comes from an individual who purposefully does engage with a coin join and does go through with the entire coin join. But the idea is that this, the, the individual has presented many, many, many inputs that they uh, alone hold. And what they're trying to do is they're trying to eliminate the uh, potential outputs of other participants by excluding their own inputs. So uh, let's say instead of three participants, we actually have two participants. One is green, who is malicious, and yellow, who is honest. And green here has green change outputs and green uh, mixed outputs. And as you can see, green alone can see that uh, the third output is the only other output that doesn't belong to them. So they can quickly narrow down the anonymity set in this case, down to one, but it doesn't necessarily have to be down to one. It could just be uh, uh, se severely reduced. Um, and the last one we'll talk about before we just open it up to comments and questions, because um, I'm sure a lot of people have a lot of things to say, is that behavior discrepancy. This, this is a big one. So just like in Tor, we talked about how in Tor the problem is, is that if, a, if there aren't enough users that behave the way you behave, then you're singled out. So, for example, if the user arrives with an amount of Bitcoin far larger than the users in the pool, they will be detected if they recombine coins post-mix. We've seen a lot of people uh, in the public square uh, laughing and, and, and poking about this. The fact that, uh, you know, whales come in to, um, to a zero-link protocol and when they exit, it's obvious uh, and therefore this system doesn't work. Uh, it, it's more fair to say that this system does not work for people who are acting alone. If you have 10,000 Bitcoin and everyone else has a, you know, between one and 10 Bitcoin uh, and you enter with 10,000 and leave with 10,000, yes, you are much, much easier to spot. Um, another thing we might see is that if a user sends funds and coin joins during an uncommon time zone, they could also be detected. So um, timing analysis based on when people mix and when people send is another uh, Big issue, and lastly, we, we, we talked a, a bit about the philosophy of building uh, privacy systems in, uh, in anonymity networks, and how uh, the way that a uh, uh, user puts the settings on their wallet uh, can uh, uh, reveal themselves as being unique. If, if, they, if they set the settings in a very particular way, they can actually hurt themselves. And, and this is things like, for example, uh, setting a custom uh, fee when you send funds. Um, or uh, when you send funds, how often, how frequently, and so forth. Um, so concluding thoughts, 
Uh, zero link is a fungibility protocol based on an untrusted central coordinator, uh, equal output mixing, and the anonymity of large crowds, uh, much like Tor. It, it is a system of fungibility based on anonymity networks. Um, so um, I, I wanted to leave it at that, but I, I, I will say there, there, there's a lot of things I wanted to say and, and could say, you know, about, for example, current implementations um, or what I think, you know, how Wasabi works uh, in, in practice or other attack vectors. But I think that uh, we'll, we'll sort of uncover them together as a group as we talk further on, and I'll bring them up if, if no one brings them up. And that's pretty much it for me. <laughs> okay, thank you for the uh, ironic or unironic clapping. I'm not sure which one. <laughs> no, it was good. I, I have a question about the Sybil attacks. Has that ever been something that... Um, Wasabi or anyone in the community has detected occurring. I know it, it was a very large consideration in the original work. No, I think it's not possible. Uh, it's um, if you think it through. I mean, okay. How would you define Sibyl? Is is Sibyl the anonymization of an output? Complete the anonymization of an output or? Or it's okay if you if you take like fifty percent of the mix and then they gain half as much anonymity than they want. So what 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 would you say for the CBO? Yeah, it would probably need to be de-anonymization to the point that you can narrow it down to suspects. For example, if it was used in some sort sort of criminal investigation, because I imagine nation states are the only ones who have the kind of funds to conduct a civil attack it's expensive so let, let's say there is 100 um you need to provide 99 peers for every single coin that 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 wants to do coin join and i there is oh actually now i I, I can count with that because I know the exact number. Uh, you know this fresh Bitcoin thing, the the Wasabi coin join efficiency um, GitHub repository. Uh, I created that. I, I I look at how much fresh Bitcoin comes into Wasabi daily, and for that you have to provide 99 times as much in order to completely de-anonymize every single Wasabi mixes. And there is 500 fresh Bitcoin coming into Wasabi daily, which would mean you would have to provide 99 times 500 Bitcoin to to Sibyl attack Wasabi. That's the that's the that's the number there. Uh, Wouldn't the more likely scenario be a Sybil attack targeting an individual output rather than all Wasabi users? Mm -hmm. But you cannot target like that. Uh, you you, you mm -hmm. will have to target all of a sub user. Yeah. Actually, the coordinator could selectively target, right? That 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 is that is possible. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, but one thing to consider for civil attacks is that against anyone other than the civil attacker, you still get anonymity set. Of course, depending on pre and post mix coin behavior, uh, but but if, for example, one one guy has ninety nine outputs, for an outside observer, it's still one hundred anonymity set. I mean, I didn't think of it, but now that you bring it up, if you select one input. Uh, exactly or or then then you can provide the coordinator is the only one who can who can make sure that which inputs are participating right that's that's the dos protection there so so yeah it's uh, if the coordinator has 99 times as much uh, coins actually not even 99 times because 
because it has to because it can lower the the unknown set although if you lower the unknown set for for two that's not workable because then the guy is going to mix his coin like 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 50 times <laughs> in order to get the get the green shield so so yeah at 50 times no, not 99 times 50 times as much uh, as much as as you want to to de-anonymize someone yeah it's uh actually yeah I, I i did not think about it now it seems more real i'm just i'm just catching this on on the fly that yeah the coordinator should be able to to sibyl attack yeah But but anything else is uh, is completely unrealistic there. That's really the ninety nine times uh, five hundred Bitcoin daily. That's how much a Sibyl attacker would need. He cannot he cannot even decide which which inputs it is attacking. You know. So it's a matter of liquidity rather than expense in the case the coordinator is the attacker because the coordinator receives the fee for the coin join as well uh yeah i didn't even talk about the fees i i, I was only talking about the initial <laughs> initial requirements the initial <laughs> bitcoin requirements at this point yes uh the coordinator would have to pay network fees too uh yeah it's uh that that's another difficulty there sure Anyway, guys, um, I'm not bringing up topics here because that that would be strange. So I guess we can we can finish this this up, or or, or do you guys have something? No, uh, I definitely have qu quite a lot of stuff. I think we we can talk about. Um, so uh, unless what are we going to talk about after after this? Adam, did you have something to talk about after this? No, I, I, I don't. I, okay, I, so I, I feel like this is somewhat an outdated paper. Other than the Xiaomi and CoinJoin stuff, uh, nothing aged that well. Other than the basic, the core protocol, nothing aged that well. Like the, the Zero Link framework was was uh, not a very successful. Um, in, in hindsight, th this wasn't successful because this was supposed to be used by multiple wallets. That's why so much time was spent on making sure the wallets aren't aren't fingerprintable. But but as as time went on, it it became more and more clear that 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 cannot be made sure, and it's not like many wallets would have been interested in privacy so so i think that was kind of a waste of time and a waste of space on github to to specify so so many things there uh the the coin join protocol the xiaomi and coin join protocol actually aged very well and that's uh other than implementation details everything is the same If there were uh, guys, a zero link library, would that make a difference? If from Wasabi Wallet there was an engine that just powered zero link that one could build a wallet on top of? Um, not sure, but I wouldn't bother with it because we are working on, um, how would you say, a zero link 2.0, but it's not even 2.0. It's it's a it's a similar thing. It solves the issues that uh, that the Xiaomi and Coin Join thing has. Like, oh, there is a minimal denomination, or you cannot send in the Coin Join. So it solves the the largest issues there. And 
and and I I wouldn't bother with with zero link anymore because this this thing is is going to happen going to be be released in 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 the in this year. I, I I'm keep preferring to this this thing because we don't have a name yet. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and, and we just started it today, but uh, it was an extremely promising day. So I'm 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 really excited about this. Uh, guys, uh, Max wrote in in the chat that he has a very shitty connection, so he wrote a couple of messages with questions to the chat. The first is, how does the new implementation of mixing with multiple wallet in one instance affect civil attacks? Anyone wants to answer that? It doesn't. <laughs> okay, loud and clear. <laughs> um, the second question was, what is the current implementation of DOS protection in Wasabi? Aviv, uh, how did you call it? Just, what, banning coins? Yeah, banning coins. So if someone doesn't sign, it is banned right now for two hours because it's we don't really have denial of service attacks. It's more like unreliable anonymity network, unreliable Tor connection. That uh, that seems like much more of an issue than than we thought. And of course, honest peers cannot be differentiated. Malicious peers cannot be differentiated from peers those has bad connections, or or or, or not even not even individual connections, but but the connection can be bad through the onion network, the route that you choose. So so that's that's a that's a huge practic practical issue there, um, and and yeah, it's. It's 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 banning coins uh, from participating for uh, for for some time. We are also going up and down on the transaction chain. So, for example, if you spend that coin, then you still cannot register into to the Wasabi mix because well, that would be going around the DOS protection. Although this this gets uh, expensive for the attacker. Anyway. Um, it's it, it it's just banning coins. It doesn't. I would love if someone put this to the test, but, but because we didn't even had to use our very basic configurations, and we actually wrote a lot of code to 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 be able to even make this much more severer. So if, if someone would attack Wasabi and would be successful, then we could just change uh, one line in the configuration and, 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 and he would have to come up with a completely new strategy. So I feel very confident about that at this point and, and I, I don't know why no one bothers to, to attack it. But may, maybe it's because, because if hacker, hackers don't want to attack it, because there is nothing to gain from it. Chain analysis companies don't want to attack it because it's illegal. So that that could be the reason there. <laughs> okay, perfect. Um, another question. Now, Adam, can you speak more about your coin join Sudoku analysis of change outputs? I'm not sure. Did I wrote anything about this in in zero link? No, I am not sure. I'm just reading what Max sent me. I I I, I sorry. I Max, can you? I, I don't know what. Max has about. Max has a very bad connection now, so he's just sending over his questions in chats. And I'm just reading them out loud, basically. So, yeah. 
That was his question about your coin join pseudo coin analysis of change outputs. Oh, I think I think I know what he says. he says that you did analysis of change with coin join Sudoku and the non equal value outputs created. Yeah, I I, I got uh, the information I had is a UTXO that was smaller than the 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 denomination the base denomination and i give it a try to de-anonymize it and i couldn't uh that's that, that's pretty much it even though i know other coins must had been matched together in the mix there were more possibilities than than i I, I initially thought so I couldn't figure out which uh, even which which coins it joined that coin together with so so yeah it was a interesting exercise mm -hmm. okay perfect That's um, I hope I hope that would answer this question <laughs> Uh, I just have yeah. one more question about uh, Max, Max's first question uh, about uh, multiple wallets in one instance. Uh, doesn't it just make a, a Sybil attack a little bit easier that the uh, attacker doesn't have to run uh, like many Wasabi wallets? He could just... L let, let me add to that. Um, so, yes, it does make it a little bit easier. But if someone really wants a Sybil attack and they want a Sybil attack Wasabi specifically, they're going to need hundreds of thousands of dollars worth of Bitcoin and they're going to need to be quite um, dedicated. So oh, yeah. if, 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 they can, if they can get hundreds of thousands of dollars of Bitcoin and they have a, com com a c committed attitude to breaking this, they probably know how to do it with or without multi-wallet support. They probably are comfortable running it on multiple sim systems. Um, that would only add a little bit of cost compared to the, the cost of, of, of the Bitcoin they would have to, to have to do it. Um, so I, I don't think so. But what it does do is it does mitigate the person who has maybe two businesses or one business and a personal account. And they don't want to reveal to the world that those two things are related. And if they try to manage it in one wallet, they can accidentally queue coins together and, and do all sorts of things. Whereas if they now have two separate wallets, which they can they can look at uh, at the same time and coin join at the same time, then it, it'll be easier to pr protect them. Yeah, definitely. And I do agree. I mean, I don't see a civil attack as a actual like real risk in Wasabi's case. I think there's much better things for uh, these companies to do if they would try to do something so yeah so uh, let's talk uh, about that a bit right so how um so with with, with simple attack uh you, you want to have as many outputs as possible that you know and that uh, uh that allows you to to narrow down the, the other outputs um Every, you know, if there are even two honest participants, then you can reduce the anonymity set all the way down to two. One thing to note is that uh, if two people are engaging in a civil attack at the same time, but they're not coordinating with each other, then they further add anonymity. So the, the, the civil attacker is in, is in a quite a difficult spot because um, they have to hope that there aren't a lot of people participating and that they're the only one uh, engaging in this attack. Um, so I... I think it, it, it is quite unreasonable. However, if you drop the anonymity set of a, of a coin join down to, let's say, I don't know, off the top of my head, let's say five, which would be a really bad idea, but I don't know, that's just off the top of my head, then it is very practical to, to do this attack, right? And I talked about this at length, how you would do it if there was, if, if the upper limit of a coin join was five participants, all you would do is five or even 10 large coins, put them on, on separate computers or separate, uh, uh, you know, uh, in, in instances of, of your, your, um, your coin join um, uh, software. And you just hope that enough collisions of your 10 instances appear 
on on any given coin join. And if, if you have if you have one collision, like that is to say, two of your uh, your your wallets uh, intersected, <laughs> the anonymity set by forty percent, sixty percent, and and that's quite trivial to do. I think. Yeah, I totally agree with that. I mean, it has to have enough of participants per round to be actually uh, effective against the civil attack. And also to have a big enough of amount as a minimum for, for the round. And, okay, so if no one else has anything to say, I, I want to bring up another thing. So let's, let's talk about um, the anonymity set. A, a bit, right? Um, so, in my presentation, I talked about coin joins as though they happen in a vacuum. There's just one coin join, but we, we all know that coin joins happen sequentially, and uh, most participants will engage in more than one coin join because they have more than uh, one co clean coin that they can receive. Um, uh, so, you know. If you look at a coin join in, in, in a vacuum, the anonymity set's pretty obvious. It's the number of honest participants in that coin join, and we assume, because we, we, it's impossible to, to, to prove otherwise, we assume that the theoretical limit is that everyone is, 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 is honest. Um, now, if, if a person remixes, and suppose they remix in, an, in, in the adjacent coin join, um, they're going to obviously get some additional benefit. Um, and I think this is where Adam and I have, have had disagreements at, at times, which is that I don't believe that remixing in an adjacent coin join does even um, does as much as even uh, double the anonymity set that you currently have. So if there's 50 participants in the first and then 50 participants in the second, the likely anonymity set of engaging in both those coin joins uh, with the remix is probably you know from 50 to 60 or from 50 to 70 and uh, and the absolute upper bound would be 100 but it's, it's unlikely because other participants also engage in sequential coin joins so you're hiding in the same crowd of, of uh, people um, and I'm curious if, if anyone has any thoughts on, on that well I do agree that it's kind of like the more accurate way to uh, to say it would be like uh, the, for example, for one remix round, uh, your total anonymity set as a like a maximum could be like the amount of uh, UTXOs in the second mix uh, minus the ones uh, that came from the previous mix uh, from the previous round, and also like adding all the persons or the uh, participants who were in the first round. I mean, uh, some kind of mix from those. And yeah, I, I kind of understand your point think that it's not like the 200. Think about it in, in a probability, from probability point of view rather than anonymity set point of view. If you mix, take, take a coin, take your coin, take a random coin from the blockchain and mix that. Now you're going to get a 0 0.1 Bitcoin out of, of that mix. And of all the 0 0.1 Bitcoin outputs, half of them are remixed and another half of them are not remixed. So there is a 50% chance that you remix that random coin what you just took from the beginning. And on the next coin join, again, a 50% chance that it's going to be remixed. And on the next coin join, again, a 50% chance if it's going to be remixed. And now work with these probabilities. So what are the chances that you are going to remix three times? And that's not much. That's, that's why remixing, that, that's why people talk about the exponential privacy gains of remixing. So, uh 
I, 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 I still am not sold. I'm particular. So it, it, it comes down to um, the actual user behavior of the propensity of someone to remix. Um, so uh, if what you're, you know, you know, in theory, uh, any coin, any, any mixed coin from Wasabi could be a coin from two years ago. That's just been remixing and remixing and remixing. Mm -hmm. That's possible. However, what's more likely is that, uh, you know, th there's a 50% chance that it's a coin from a direct uh, participant, a, a brand new participant. Another 50% is that it's remixed. But when you say remixed, we mostly mean in the... Sorry, uh, Max, you got you to gotta mute yourself. Max? Here we go. Um, so, um, uh, uh, I, I really don't don't buy this because, uh, and, and I've had this argument with uh, an, uh, an, an, another um, s some other f f folks about about this matter. But uh, of those remixers, most are coming from the previous coin joint, of which half of them are new mixers. And so when when you do this, uh, uh, when you go back, you know, say two or three or four remixes, you're already getting to a very very infinitesimally small probability and the majority are from you know let's say four coin joints um, of which most of those people have in, in, in inter uh, um, overlap of participants so again you, you have a very you know potentially a linear climb in terms of anonymity but, but the only way I would I would be I would say I'm wrong is is if the, the nature of wasabi was such that uh, people who mixed uh, older coins had a priority in remixing, such that uh, coins from very distant coin joints uh, had an advantage to participate in new coin joints. And then I would say there's probably, uh, it's still probably linear, but it's at least faster in terms of um, the anonymity set growth. That's a, that's a good idea. Uh, may I just add one more question about that? I mean, uh, let's just think about like two rounds of mixing. Uh, the first one, you have 100 participants. You are one of those. Let's say that uh, 50 of them goes and remixes on the second round. And there's also like 100 participants. Wouldn't your anonymity set be like from the first round, you would get like 100 for the outsiders? I I'm, I'm not sure uh, from which perspective to look at this, but I mean, you could get like anonymity set of 50 from the first round. And if there is no remixes after the second round, wouldn't it be like more of like 150 more than uh, closer than the, uh, the 200 that it shows correctly? It, it would be 150. Uh, you're exactly right, except it would be 150 with a caveat, which and the caveat is the probability. So there's a 50% chance um, it's it's one of the 50 people, right? And then it, there's a 50% chance it's one of the 100. So in other words, if you say, is it, is it, is it someone from the first coin join? The answer is there's like a, like there's a smaller probability it's from the first coin join than it is from the second coin join. Um, in terms of the participation. So it, it, it's not a uniform probability, but you're right, it's it's 150 uh, anonymity set um, and, not, and not 200. O also, it's very important to understand that it, it, it displays how inefficient it is to have small coin joins. The bigger the coin join, the much, much more efficient uh, it is. Olga had a question that if... Uh if the current implementation is vulnerable to Wagner attack, uh, for those of you who don't know Wagner attack is, this is possible in with the Schnorr blinding signature scheme. And it, it, it works something like this. You, you get more and more signatures, the more likely that you can, you can, I don't know what you can do with that, but the more likely that you can execute this Wagner's attack, uh, I don't remember exactly what happened, but uh, but that's something that we considered back then. And so so you need more signatures from blind signatures from the same 
pub key and you also need more uh, time and that's how we we mitigated it uh, first we don't give out that many signatures and you also don't have time because we only give out the signatures in the end of connection confirmation phase so from from there on you only have uh three minutes maybe to 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 execute this attack so that's not uh not 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 very doable also we re we don't reuse the the signing keys so every round a new signing key is generated that's the that's the that's 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 that was our mitigation there um yeah perfect thank you okay uh, uh, this uh, this is a question also that uh Olga posted uh previously um why did we switch from Chamian to Schnorr blind signatures? Because we introduced the denomination and there is another attack if the coordinator lies about the the the, the round parameters and the most important such round parameter is the public keys. So, so, so we introduced the new denominations, and now every denomination needs a new, a new public, uh, a new new signing key. So the thing is that the the RSA signature scheme is extremely heavy, and our mitigation of the coordinator lying would be that that we are somewhat probabilistically mitigating that there is a monitoring identity in every client not only those who participate but but everyone and every time uh, and you keep sending the the backend server a request that a status request and that status request returns a a fair amount of things like the filters uh, that returns the Bitcoin price that returns a couple of things, but it also returns the the public keys of this round. So it returns 11 public key. And this is with, with, with the RSA scheme, this this would be a huge amount of network traffic, but with Schnorr blind signatures, this is just uh, this is just a 256 byte. Uh, I'm I'm not quite sure, but but it's 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 much smaller, so we 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 gain gain some some edge there that because it's much smaller and it's a very frequent request. Imagine it like this every every minute someone every minute your client sends a request I'm not even sure if every minute even more frequently maybe sends a request to the backend that hey give me your status and every time the backend answers with with the eleven public key of this coin join round even if you're not coin joining so you had to had to, to, to lower that. Uh, also another consideration was that we did not want to rely on different cryptographic assumptions because Bitcoin already relies on elliptic curve cryptography and and, and so we, we, we didn't have to rely on the RSA cryptography here. Hmm, interesting. Okay, I guess if nothing nothing is there then then i want to to go into the future a bit more and just to keep you guys up to date updated that um nothing much uh and istvan sheresh andres and me started working on 
the 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 new coin the new mixing scheme today and i have to say it, it, it's much more it's even more promising than i thought so nothing much just uh outlined a few things that i didn't think that was actually solvable and we are only so, so we, we don't want to leave you out we are only working on a, a first draft which is about we, we we don't we take a lot of things out of the scope even the network fees everything this is only about to present the idea in a in a well digestible way so i was thinking we can do this in a in, in in just just this week but as as i i said nothing much presented something that could be much more that that could be quite revolutionary to be honest and and that's something that has to be explored before the idea is presented and and this is the anonymous what is it anonymous credentials and there is a paper which i would like to propose for the next wasabi research club the anonymous credentials paper and that way maybe we we could figure out if this this is something that that could work or or, or not uh so that's 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 about it i i'm really excited actually that after today and um, and 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 get you guys as soon as we we finish uh, just a quick draft of the idea and share with you and and everyone can can participate and join and and whatever you you, you guys would would like to do with it if if you would and that would be great uh, and and work out the research together any perfect thanks for the update uh, adam can i ask you to um, maybe it's possible to shift this conversation that you have to main research thread in slack i mean that would be very helpful because for example in rgb uh, there are a bunch of protocols that might be useful for you also, and I want to make sure that there is or there is a synergy that we can work on together, or there is no synergy at least yet, and I can just stay updated, something like that. I don't think so. It's hard enough to to follow Istvan and nothing much. Uh, to be honest <laughs> and, and handle them ju just the two of them and I I mean there is a limited capacity of how much information we can we can get in and if uh, if people keep coming with uh, with, with, with new things like oh let's put it to the lightning network and pay to endpoint and things like that so I, I really want to rule out as many things of the scope of of this first idea presentation as possible, and after that, yes, but 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 until we don't have a stable idea, I I would prefer not to. It's a, I I would kind of prefer if Aviv could participate, but. I'm I'm not quite sure about because it's like he has another job to do and it just you know I'll quit Adam. I'll do it. Let me participate. <laughs> Let me stop the recording. That's the attitude. <laughs> <laughs> That's the attitude. No, no, no. I, I love my job. I always <laughs> I would never <laughs> quit my job. Okay, Adam, fair enough, really. Okay. But but also yeah. the, the anonymous credentials paper maybe 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 that will give everyone the, the same idea what we are doing. I don't know, we'll see. Uh yeah. That's good. All right. 
So have we stopped recording, Adam? Hmm? Have we stopped recording? No, not yet. So don't say you're quitting. Uh, I'm stopping the recording. All right, I stop now. So you are quitting. <laughs>